I'm, I was one of those guys where I'm like, um, I showed up to college. I was like, I can draw pretty good. And I put my stuff up and I, Ooh, I could sleep in. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm sleeping in. And then all of a sudden I, you know, you go, you pin your work up. You're like, that's pretty damn good. And everyone else is getting A's and you're getting C's because you're not showing up. What's up people. You're listening to a quick read, an advertising podcast that talks book smarts and street smarts with the people who have been there, done that. Today's guest is Jason Snell. He's a multidisciplinary creative director and content creator who collaborates with small shops and big brands. We learn how to see the invisible with Hillman Curtis's MTIV. You know what to do. Tune in and turn up. What's up, my brother? What's going <laughs> What's on? Up, man? Good, good, man. Oh, man, I'm so excited to be back in the studio, fully vaxxed. Fully vaxxed. Fully you know, vaxxed, man. Wet Dude, vax we, summer, man. We can give each other fist bumps. I haven't all been day. able to do that for 10 episodes. <laughs> it's all been remote. It's all been, I have, a, I have a mic kit that I send out to people. And when I knew that you were coming on the show, I was like, wait a second. We get to do this for reals. Yeah. I mean, I saw the email come through. You're like, no, stop down. I'm like, yeah. whoa, this is great. Like, yeah, it's it's, doing it. it's weird, but awesome. Like, yeah. this is what we should be doing, right? This is how life works. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. Thanks so, for having me, man. Yeah, man. So I'm so stoked. So for those of you listening, Snell is sort of a legend here in the Midwest, oh. Cincinnati. Wow. This cat is a freaking rock star. He's in a <laughs> band. He's... He's a designer. He's a motion designer. He he does all the things. He's he's always out there hustling in the streets. Man, that's you know that's really kind, man. I really appreciate it. But I mean, like you, you know, we we've been doing this for twenty years. We yeah. better be good at something, man. Yeah. So you know, a lot of you throw a lot of tools in there, and you just try a lot of stuff and see what works, man. Oh man. Well, I'm excited to get this conversation going. So let's kick it off. Why did you pick this book? I've never. I never heard of this book. Yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah. MTIV by Hillman Curtis, um, designer. What 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 about this is special to you? What what is what has it done for your career? Well, I appreciate that. You know, it's like one of those things when I was in school, um, and and this whole idea of like new media, like what does this mean? Like what what can this be? And there's a lot of you know a lot of kids at that time, and we're talking like 20 years ago, right? So we're we're dating ourselves here, but <laughs> yeah, we're old. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, like things like Flash and Adobe, you know, Adobe um, bringing these like sort of interactive pieces to the to the to the masses, I was one of these kids that was kind of getting into this stuff and, you know, coming from comic books and skateboarding and, and also like, you know, baseball and sports and just a lot of things in the Midwest. And I saw this book, I didn't know who this was, but, um, you know, I started watching these films online, these sh short little films of other designers that really inspired me, like Stefan Sagmeister, um, you know, and he was buddies with him and just seeing his progression from, doing website stuff like for um, like yahoo.com I think you worked on yeah. to to like making you small yeah, exactly Wasn't that one of their yeah. things <laughs> <laughs> exactly he probably worked on that but this book sort of like says hey look you can have all these different paths that lead to the next thing that is going to excite you and that's really for me the book was about process and how yeah. you get to that next fork in the road and have fun man and 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 you know make it make it a career and a life yeah well and i think what's cool about it those of you listening this is the kind of book, I think you can only get it in print, and it's uh, it's full of just eye candy. He kind of shows the work, and then the sections aren't these big chapters. They're just like nice little one-page summaries of ideas like fall in love with a master. Uh, he's got another one here that's um, what's in a word, you know? Yeah. And so he's like discovering type and how that's effective. And so this is a book you can get, and it feels like a reference book, right? You're I right. I assume that in your career, you've just gone back to this thing like a, an infinite well. Totally. Yeah. And especially, and it's so weird, like as you read through this thing, it's a pretty quick read too, right? And then what's great about that is like, you go back, like you look at some of the, like the, the media stuff and the film stuff and some of the interactive pieces and you go back and you're like, oh, there's like these like little life lessons in yeah. there that are really nice. Little and, nuggets. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. for me, I look at his stuff um, as well as he was, you know, he was this musician who uh, he, he, Right off the bat, he was like, I was a failed musician. I yeah. couldn't make a living doing this, so I had to figure it out. And I'm like, oh. Aren't we all? I know. I'm like, 
half the creatives I know are like failed musicians who are like, well, I better write or draw or design. I think or that's, figure something that's the criteria. <laughs> it is. You're you like, go to design school or, or advertising, they're like, uh, well, first of all, I just want to make sure we're clear here. You're you're a failed musician, correct? You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of were course. your first four bands? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. I love that. But that kind of gives off this energy of like this like fearless. I can get on stage or yeah. I can put work out there, sure. and and maybe it doesn't work. And I think that's like a really good lesson to sort of like fit, you know a two or three minute song. You can fail pretty quickly and go on to the next one. Yeah. So I kind of look at that as sort of like the design hits of now too yeah. with advertising and things like that. That's yeah. awesome, man. Well, I know that you haven't been a failure. You've been actually very successful. Uh, I know you've had some fails along the way, but get us up to speed. Did you always know you you wanted to be in like advertising? And, and it's not, you know, it's like you're a creative, you're a designer. A lot of what you do is in advertising, but somehow finds its way onto brands. So tell me how you found your way into this industry. Yeah, that's an awesome question. And I think we still weave in and out of it, right? Because of all the things that we want to do or try or express ourselves through art and design and these things. Um, you know, for me, early on, I just loved to draw, you know? And I think I remember when I was a kid, man, like when I got in trouble, my parents took away my, my crayons, man, <laughs> and, and stuff like that. So I tried to really keep that sort of hand eye draw, you know, always kind of, you know, going back and forth with that sketching. And those things just kind of laddered up for me to try to, you know, whether whether whatever I'm doing, it's like try to draw or sketch with that along the way. Yeah. And, you know, that that went to high school, that went to college, um, you know, and, and college, man, I know what I was doing. Yeah. Coming from Dayton, they're like, uh, there's this place in Cincinnati called DAP you might like. Yeah. Okay, let's go yeah. there and check it out. And, you know, getting beat up there a little bit as far as like the design courses were tough, man. And yeah. I'm like, I got I to gotta make this like, um, monolith hand thing out of out of uh, wood all day. I don't know what I'm doing, but you know that trial by fire I still yeah. feel like is is relative today. And yeah, I mean I worked at, at a bunch of different agencies through the the course of my tenure, if you will. Um, but I always kind of found that um, bosses sometimes um, aren't fun. <laughs> and sometimes you got to do your own thing. But yeah, I mean we we've gone sort of back and forth as as far as like working at agencies, small and large. Um, had my own shop for yeah. you know a decade. Was let's, it, let's yeah. pause there for yeah, a minute yeah, yeah. because it was that was a unique shop. So you had a, you had this brand sort of we be, we become Vikings. Yeah, um, and I don't think most people would know how to classify it. So you know those of you listening here in Cincinnati, there was a really really hip neighborhood was was popping up in Cincinnati called Over the Rhine, and Jason jumped right in and he opens this shop that was like sold screen printed posters and really interesting t-shirts and records. It was a record store, but then it was also his office and home base for his design. Like, I don't even know what it was. Like, yeah. was it a record store? <laughs> was it an agency? What was it? I think probably- It was an experiment. Yeah, I think it was, it, you're right. It definitely was an experiment. And, and having that, we started on Vine Street, right? So it was like, one of the things I told my wife, like the day that I asked to marry her, I found out I had this crazy project that uh, Amazon called me up. And they're like, hey, fly out here. You're going to be out here for like almost a year back and forth. We can't tell you the project. It's top secret. And I'm going, whoa, I better, you know, like I was going to ask Miss Sarah to marry me. And all of a sudden I just, I did it. And I'm like, oh, I also have to get on a plane the next day. And I'm opening a shop here. So <laughs> all this stuff was happening at the same time, which was really crazy. But we did it, you know, and it was like, what is this? Like, I love how you say this experiment yeah. because- you know, at the end of the day, it was like we had um, we had purchased a, a screen printing shop. I love that. I mean, that was one of the reasons, yeah. like getting into design, was like I want to support bands and small bands and do you know, like a lot of other folks, I guess. Like I, I just love the art of posters. Like yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah. let's make a poster and someone's gonna hang that on their wall and, yeah. and look at it every and, day. And it's physical. Get yeah. dirty. Get some ink. It's yeah, like yeah, exactly. It, there is something about screen printing that I feel like like that's like a designer's like. I don't know, like it, uh, it like brings them back to the roots. It does. You know? And it's like something that anyone can kind of do. And yeah. the, but also there's process and you can make it high level or low level. Yeah. And there is some really interesting, I just don't see it going away because everybody needs, you know, something to hang in, hang in their bedroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and why not 
put that to one of your favorite bands or something. So like you that. go on this magical mystery tour with Amazon. Yeah, is that, is, did it result in anything, or is it all top secret still? No, no. So this is you know many years back, but it, it became that I was like this top secret thing of like two hundred people that we were working on the Fire Phone, and I didn't okay. and I didn't realize that. And I'm like, oh well, they walk you through, and yeah. okay, I'm work on it for like a year back and forth. Yeah. But they treated me really well. I did a lot of the motion stuff. This thing was going to be on a the the um the, IO, the iOS on this thing was going to be like a gaming engine. Yeah. So it was going to be nuts. But at the end of the day, they scrapped it because they had to get this thing out. Yeah. So it just tanked. It was like a total failure. But I was like, oh, I want to show everybody this. But it's like, oh, mm. it's, it's so not no, good. Not happening. <laughs> not happening. But it also kind of gave me, it gave me a lot of, um, I don't know, like a great feeling that, hey, I can do this. I can yeah. do this in Cincinnati. Like I can kind of have my own shop here. I didn't want to leave because I'm, hey, I just asked my wife to marry yeah, yeah. me. Um, I'm bringing in some other friends to try to do, like I tried to build this thing even before we had clients to pay for it. So that hustle is kind of like, you know, people around you going, you sure you want to do that? I'm like, yeah, let's go for it. Let's try it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's a great insight, man. Just sometimes you got to just get a little dangerous. Oh, and I think that that's a good word. Like, I feel like that's a good word for you. Like not in like a, like you're going to beat me up since, but like I've always admired your work because it feels dangerous. Like you, you kind of don't give a crap. Like uh. sometimes you just like you put out there what you think is rad and then you've created a name for yourself where, hey, he's the guy who puts out stuff that's rad and like he's not going to change it. Like he's just doing his thing. I think that's really ad- admirable that you're you're bold and brave enough to just sort of say, look, either you like my vibe or you don't. And and if you don't, that's cool. You know, that's is that hard to do. Y- well, I you know, a lot of people talk about you know, coming up with a plan. Right. And I love that whole thing with Mike Tyson said it, man, everybody has a plan till they get punched in the face yeah. kind of thing, you know, but yeah, I mean, I think there's danger is an awesome word, you know, but I think until you do that, you gotta, you gotta represent and make sure that you can hit deadlines. You got to make sure that like on brand messaging, yeah. positioning, all, all those things that go into like creating a great um, piece of advertising or a brand. But I think once you can kind of get to that level, I mean, it's been some years to get to that level. I think it's okay to kind of like push in a little bit and and see what happens because you never know um, what people are going to think about it. But if you feel good about it and it is daring, like why not give that? Yeah. Why not give that an extra punch right there? I mean, especially you know, one of the things I always I always think about too is like you know, if you like something that much, uh, chances are somebody out there else is yeah. going to enjoy that or appreciate or at least ask a question about because. Sometimes it is just being curious and asking questions like, why, why is that what it is? And, yeah. You know, d- design helps support those things. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's fun. Yeah, I think, you know, listening to you talk and just hearing about your story and how you kind of came up in the game brings, brings us to sort of the first talking point around this book. And, and you can't avoid that this really is just, it's, it's Hillman Curtis exposing himself to the world. Yeah. Like he's just showing like, this is me. This is how I do things. And I see a lot of that, um, you know, coming through what you're saying and some of that work. So I guess talk a little bit about, you know, him as a person. It seems like that's like, you know, a lot of these these books we talk about on the show, you know, have like a nice little, you know, buttoned up sort of chapter title or whatever. But this is a unique book. This is sort of like a, an artist bearing his soul. So what what did you learn about this artist and, and sort of him as a person? Yeah, I love that. And and. What I love about Hillman Curtis too is he's he's kind of fearless, right? And he's he can go in and wear what he wore on stage the night before, walk into you know a room and and mesmerize him because he knows he knows what he's doing. He's been there. He's mm. he's got this sort of attitude, but yet he knows what he's talking about. I mean, when you're creating a whole website for you know one of Yahoo's first launches, I feel like like you're walking into a room that you know, a lot of suits and these things, a lot of people yeah. have a lot of money invested oh, yeah. and like, who's this guy? But, you know, to be able to articulate and talk through those processes, um, for me, I was like, wow, like this rock and roller can do that. Like it kind of gave me confidence to say, you know, I can still do both sides of those coins. And, and through that book, he talks about how like, you know, not just the failed musician uh, aspect, but also like finding new things that, Ooh, there's a gem over here in this corner. What if I spent, you know, an extra hour or two on this? Like, where could that go? And that ended up, like, positioning him into, like, film and, like, doing this whole other level um, of storytelling that, um, you know, 
doesn't always come through like like web 1.0 and things like yeah. that, you know? So I felt like he was kind of in this book, um, and this is before like Instagram too, like he's showing process, he's showing some of his work and, and some of the things that failed and succeeded. And I love the aspect of being able to flip through that and seeing some of the gnarly stuff, but also seeing him just being, you know, this worked or this didn't work. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. And I, again, I think I can't reiterate it enough that this is... Um, it's a different type of book. This isn't like your pop marketing book. This is a, uh, it's like part showpiece, part uh, masterclass. Yeah. But in yeah. not masterclass in like read four chapters, like masterclass as in like um, sort of like the, the like Yoda slash Mr. Miyagi style. Like, let me share with you a thought. And then like, you have to go meditate on it a little bit. Yeah. I like that. So. I, but that, that's like our careers though, right? Like yeah. we have these like these little um, pieces that, you know, maybe to someone else, like was like, oh, whatever, I've done that a hundred times. But to someone new in the game, they're like, wow, that's that's how I can do that. I can I can be vulnerable. Yeah. I can talk about this piece, and that's why I always like encourage, um, you know, new new artists, new designers to not be afraid to pick things that um, or who they want to work for, who they want to work yeah. with. I think is even more important, like who you surround yourself with. I mean, that's more important almost than, I mean, really is the people than the brand and those things too. So yeah. there's a lot of that, like where it shows like his vulnerability to go and say, you know, I don't know how to make this film, but I, I really like slow motion and <laughs> we're going to sit there and we're just like, we're going to have this pause moment. And then there's some beauty in that, you yeah. know, and, and he really, Hellman, Hellman really showed that in this book and sort of in his life, um, which, which, which I love still continues to yeah. inspire me. And yeah. he, he kind of passed away before his time, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was really, um, it was wild because he was doing all these work, doing all this work for Adobe, um, and doing all these interviews. Um, like I said, like I remember like Sagmeister, Paul Shear, all these like big hitters in the game. And he was putting them on camera. Like we hadn't seen, for me, I hadn't seen these like artists and designers yet. So early in my career, it was really cool to be like, Oh, that's Paul Shear. Like he's, mm. he's actually sitting down and talking to her. And now it seems like whatever, but 20 years ago, I don't know. There just wasn't that much information mm -hmm. or FaceTime on some of these like legends that we look at mm -hmm. in the advertising and design world. But he was some of the one of the first to sort of sit down, take a moment, and say, you know, like why is this important? You know, wh like what do you do? Like that day in the life stuff too. That really, mm. you know, just takes off and is still fun to watch. And yeah. I love. I just see, I love seeing. Well, and now look, we get to sit down here yeah. and look at each yeah, other. Yeah, like, yeah. ooh, okay. You know, <laughs> it's just it's just such a different thing to. Um, you know, I don't know, just take a moment and listen to somebody um, and get inspired. That's know? awesome, man. And, you know, speaking of inspiration, you know, the big, the second big idea in the book that, you know, he talks a lot about inspiration and process. So what, what did you learn about inspiration and process and how have you implemented that into your process in your career? Yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I think process is, you know, I think a lot of people feel more comfortable sharing that now, which is really cool. And I mean, even if you look at numbers like on your on your own instagram or wherever the hands all that all that stuff like i always notice that's a stuff where i'm sort of like peeling the curtain back and showing the sketches like those mm -hmm. always people want to see that more so i i it's almost like that sort of like documentary filmmaking mm -hmm. and for me the older i get like history becomes more and more important yeah. to me like i just want to know like i'm searching for that knowledge in a different way yeah. Um, but the process of that stuff always, it will ladder up to some sort of piece. It'll yeah. find its way into the work. It's like one of, one of the projects that I really um, like love and felt dear to me was when I did put my shop um, downtown or in over the Rhine, I wanted to know who the neighbors were like a mm -hmm. hundred years ago. Like that inspired me. So like going and figure out there was the world's strongest man that lived on the block. I'm like, how do we celebrate that? That's super yeah. cool. And then that led to like, Ezra Charles, who was like the you know heavyweight champion of the world in 1950, like he was in this neighborhood, and yeah. then you just dig deeper, and I I think I become almost more like this historian, nerd buff, um, and design like that's creeping yeah. in more and more too, and that just goes to like well it's okay to show like inspiration process practice, but what does that mean for you? And and yeah. and I'm like, when I was in school, I never thought history would would <laughs> creep in yeah. at all. I'm like, who cares? But, so, yeah. so let's, let's dissect your process for a second. So, so we're, what, what Jason's talking about is he was able to participate with, um, the city of Cincinnati has a phenomenal group called, um, artworks and they produce 
a, a series of um, large scale murals across the city. I know a lot of cities do this. Cincinnati is very unique and skilled at what they do. And, and, and they bring in some really big artists um, from all over the world. And we have an amazing culture of street art and murals here in town. If you've never been here before, you'll see Shepard Ferry, you'll see Vils, you'll see Jason Snell, uh, you know. And <laughs> yeah. so anyway, what he's talking about right now ended up being two iconic, massive murals in the city at a very, very large scale. Um, so with Ezra Charles in the world's strongest man. So let's just, let's learn about that for a minute. So you've already given us sort of step one, which was uh, be interested, dig into the history, do your research. So totally. is there anything to add to that sort of early phase, research phase? Like, is it like, how deep do you go? Like, are we talking CSI or are we talking like Wikipedia? Well, CSI for sure. And and I've just been able and, and fortunate enough to not only dig and, and keep digging, like, you know, crate digging when you're yeah. going and you're looking for records, yeah. you know, that, that sort of creeps in as well. But I've found, you know, people in the city who really care about the history of this, mm -hmm. um, you know, mainly uh, like the folks too, like King Records, like that really kind of sucked me in as like bringing in like that music, bringing in design, but also people like Brian Powers at the, mm -hmm. at, uh, at the uh, Cincinnati uh, Public Library. He like, he's a historian and, and he just kept feeding me this information. I was like yeah. more and more and more. And, <laughs> and it's just, you know, old cities, you know, they used to call what Cincinnati, the Paris of the West and things like that. There was a lot of, a lot of new things happening here in the last, you know, yeah. 100, 150 years ago. So I think like continually making that um, story, like I yeah. want to know more, like there's more stories that are still being uh, uncovered sure. throughout the city. Like I just found out, um, what was it? Billboard magazine started here, like wow. on Vine Street. Okay. I'm like, that's that's pretty wild, <laughs> that's you know? Cool. Like, yeah. So every day is sort of like this new, yeah. like, getting inspired from history. Um, but also I think that second step too is awareness, like self-awareness, like making sure like, you know, was this right? Was this proper? Mm. I mean, there's a lot of thinking right now. Um, and just like, you know, being inclusive, like what yeah. really happened? Like what's going on? Yeah. Why is that important? What makes us different? Well, what about that in the corner? Like there was a voice there. Like yeah. what, was that not told? And I think a lot of times those are the things I get really attracted to are those, those stories not told because yeah. there is a voice there that was just maybe kept down yeah. forever or just didn't have a platform. Yeah. So and and I see that a lot in our murals around our city. I mean, you know, from Neltner to, you know, to to Jenny Ustick, like just a lot of amazing work and that storytelling is is becoming colorful. It's really cool. So in your process, how do you connect the dots? And I think young designers listening are gonna like eat this up. And so we wanna get I wanna drill down a little more into the weeds of like your magic dust. So when you're Thanks. chasing a story and you're doing research. Are you looking for, you know, those fundamental elements of design, texture, shape, form, type, et cetera? And are you just seeing what pops and you're like, ooh, that's interesting typeface that, you know, you grab that. And then, ooh, that's an interesting texture there. You grab that. Ooh, I love that color palette. You grab that. So are you collecting, are you dissecting from the story these fundamental elements of design to construct sort of your, I guess, your, your roadmap or your North Star of how to make a piece? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, and I, I think for me it, it's a little bit of everything, and and every project's different, right? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, working on a a, a big piece for um, Hard Rock right now, and in a lot of these imagery of like the old King Records guys, they didn't let cameras in there. They didn't let cameras into the secret sauce to see that black and white people were working together in the studio. Like that was like forbidden. Like don't show that. So. I think a lot of us who are, are dealing with subject matter like that, yeah. we have to re, we have to invent that. Like I don't know exactly how that looks, so you kind of go back and you you dive back into, you know, old magazines, uh, history books. Yeah. Like what was the color of that? What was the texture of that? And you sort of amass like, um, you know, you fill up your desk with these books, but yeah. you also, you know, I mean, hey, I'm like every other creative director, man, Pinterest is a, is a friend <laughs> yeah. and it's such a resource, right? So those kind of things, but you know, also, I mean, I, I, I love my field notes sketchbook, man, yeah. and, and, and filling that thing up too. So I think, you know, but I think if you drill down even further than that, I think as a, as a young artist and designer, you have to be willing to, to ask and ask for help and, and just ask questions like, where could this lead? And, um, you know, I think for me that that's been probably the most fun lately. It's just yeah. asking questions. Awesome. 
So after you ask the questions, you get you get a sense, you have the data, you start a story starts to emerge. Then what? How do you what, what ha, when does the pen go down on the paper? Yeah, so I'm a big fan of uh, Photoshop Illustrator, uh, After Effects, and, and my Wacom tablet. Man, that is really for me. Like when I, and I'll tell this story real quick too. This is great. Like I'd never used one. I was always just mouse, 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 and trying to illustrate with that. It's very hard and time yeah. consuming. And really, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get to that next level yeah. unless you can actually use your hand, and that's some form of matter. So I got a gig at Lightborn, man. It was awesome. Yeah. I was, I was young. It was like, this is like, and, and Lightborn is this place in town. Do, yeah. They do all the crazy, like big shop, a yeah. lot of, a lot of motion design film. Uh, they do a lot of big concert graphics for all the major artists. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they're yeah. highly skilled and have a great culture. Yeah, for sure. And I was, I, I started my first day and everybody's on these tablets, man. And I'm sitting here with my mouse and I'm like, oh man, they are just so much faster than me. Like, I, I gotta, I gotta jump. I gotta figure this out. So like the next day, I got one in there, and oh, it was terrible. It was so I, I'm like, what am I doing? And they're <laughs> like, I'm working on this like Kenny Chesney video. Like, I gotta like remove like these claws out of this like from his face, or I don't know. It was like in the shot or something. And I'm like, holy crap! Like this is like. I got like three frames done. It was so hard, but man, you know what? I was sitting next to these these people who were like just rock stars at it. And I just picked it up, man. And seriously, yeah. like ten days later, two weeks, man, I was I got this. I got just this. Doing, just doing the work. Yeah. Just, so, you just get sometimes you just gotta like just start doing it. Yeah, and you know what? <laughs> you're on the spot. It's like a stage. Yeah. People are around you. People notice stuff when you're when you're working around yeah. them. So you kind of sink or swim with that. So yeah. that was a definitely a lesson of like. Man, I cannot fear this piece of equipment right now. I gotta like, I gotta put the smile on and go for it. Yeah. And I'm so glad because you know, ten years later or whatever, I, man, that's what I'm doing every day. So yeah. I'm I'm grateful for that. Like, learn a new skill and like, you never know. Yeah. What that's gonna like, you know. It, since that, I've just been getting way more into illustration and 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 that creeps more into my yeah. work, whether it's motion or. Um, a big brand and you're seeing like these big brands now, like not being afraid of illustration and yeah. putting some of that more, that human um, element into the work. And, and I love seeing that like across yeah. just the globe, you know? So it sounds like we're, we're digging in, we're, we're getting into research, we're doing our story. We're, we're then stepping forward and just not being afraid to do the work, put a pin to the paper, even if you don't know how to use it, just right. put it down, start getting stuff on the sheet, start yeah. getting stuff out there. So once you start filling your 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 uh, your Illustrator, your Photoshop, whatever, you start filling your comps with stuff. Yeah. Um, how do you curate it? How do you get through the? You've got this, you know, massive collection of just ideas. Yeah. And your field notes and your sketchbook, and now they're down. We've got a story. <laughs> it's down on paper. But how do you start to refine it to become something interesting? Well, and what's then, that step? I, you know, and then. After that, you have to navigate 50 people telling you no. So like, <laughs> there's, there is that. I mean, like, honestly, there's a lot of people that just, I have found that you have to find the people that are better than you to work with. Yeah. And I mean, that goes back to the heart of everything that we really haven't talked about, but like strategy yeah. and like the message behind that. And what does this mean? And, and really diving into... Um, yeah, like the, the strategy meat of that. And I took that for granted forever. I'm, I was one of those guys where I'm like, um, I showed up to college. I was like, I can draw pretty good. And I put my stuff up and I, Ooh, I could sleep in. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm yeah. sleeping in. And then all of a sudden I, you know, you go, you pin your work up. You're like, that's pretty damn good. And everyone else is getting A's and you're getting C's cause you're not showing up. So mm. I realized pretty quickly. It's like, Whoa, you can't just like no one cares. Like you have to show up, you have to have conversations, you have to talk about this stuff. Yeah. And that sort of ladders into like the design thinking and just, you know, again, strategy with stuff. And I, and I just felt like t for me to take all this stuff that it looks kind of cool. Like it's almost like anybody and everybody can do stuff right now. That's blowing my mind. That's like cool and, and amazing from every little mm. part of the globe. But if you don't have any story or backing behind that, um, then it's just a pretty picture. And sometimes that just doesn't have the longevity or last. So to me now, you know, it's, to go back to history and stuff, now that leveling up is story. And mm. I think a lot of us are, are searching for those great stories. And I think brands are too. Yeah. And, you know, we go back to those words like authentic and things like that. But um, that's why I love working in my neighborhood. And I think that's, you know, being able to um, identify with the community or communities, a neighborhood, you start to really 
think about those words like often authenticity mm-hmm. and um, and just showing up, being able to tell a better and a better story. So now it's like, you know, you've got all this stuff on the table. You've got all this great, you know, fun work that, that you want to share to the world. But like, how does that, how is that going to improve someone's life? You know, mm. I think, I think that's a big thing to think about. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, you mentioned having opportunity where you put up what you thought was rad work, you know, whether it's school or maybe some other jobs in your career that maybe didn't hit as hard as you thought it would. And it sounds like what you've learned is that it hits harder or it hits different when you have strategy. So tell me about a time, was there, what was the first project where that clicked for you and the strategy was just as tight as the work? And you were like, oh yeah, this is, this is how it's done. And like, was there a project in mind where it's just like everybody involved was like, yes, hell yes. Yeah. You know, and, and, and awesome question, Brandon. And with that too, it's like one of those things you just didn't realize it until like maybe a year <laughs> later or something too, or one of those things where, um, it was so fast. You look back and you go, oh man, that was all right. Um, for me, it was wor- working with my buddy, uh, Mike Gibney on the early days of Vikings where we got, we got an opportunity to bring, um, I guess it was around like the holiday seasons. And we knew that, uh, Richard Branson was walking through Virgin and they were, they were selling this whole new like experience. And it was almost like a, um, like a, like an annual report, but it was, okay. but it was like digital and like projected on the wall. So he could walk through and be like, that's cool. I like that. I don't like that. Bye. Um, one of those things. And, but my buddy who I went to school with way back in the day, he worked there, his agency couldn't do it. And I mean, the drop day was like seven days to do like an interactive experience and all these like massive, wow. like blown up posters. And I, of course I'm going to say, yeah, man, yeah. like I, I'm, guess what? I'm not going to go to sleep for a week and we're not going to go home. We're just going to figure this thing yeah. out. Cause this is a massive opportunity, a brand. Yeah. And I'm like, man, can we sneak in there and do that? So we really, once again, you're attracted to danger. I know. Like, I'm like, this thing could just fail. <laughs> There's a like, lot of people that would not take that on because oh, they would man. be afraid like, oh, it's not enough time. There's not enough resources. I've never done it before. Yeah. But just like grabbing that Wacom tablet, man, you were like, let's go. Yeah, let's go. I don't I, like, I don't even know the culture there. Like I'm, I'm in Cincinnati. <laughs> like we didn't have even time to fly out and do it. They're just like, here's a breakdown. Um, we need like, we need a strategy to make these visuals look, look great. Um, you know, what can we do? We were thinking about a little game in here. So I'm like, oh my gosh, all right. So I need to get a programmer. <laughs> we're going to do this game. Oh, it's going to be just, it's going to be games. It's just going to be board games. Like we'll take some something that's lo-fi and like make it like hi-fi, you know, for their yeah, industry. Cool. So that was sort of like the strategy. And Mike was really, Gibney was really helpful with that. Like we wrote everything, you know, I'm like, wow, we're like on whiteboards writing out the strategy. I'm like, I need to dive in and, and do some design, man. Like we, you know, yeah. we haven't, we got like three days, but <clears throat> Luckily, you know, it was great that we did make that time, even though it was like most of the time to think of the idea, like, what is this going to be? Yeah. And I think too, as you get, as you get older, it's like, you got to spend, um, I, I feel like it's healthier if we can spend more time on like the big idea of what this thing's going to be. And then it's like, you're expected to like deliver on design. Like, yeah. that's just kind of like, you just you have to do that. And now, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm great. I love that. I love like the, here's uh, seven the danger days, of that. Here's seven days. Go be awesome. Oh man. I, and by the way, I expect it to be awesome. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Like you don't have a choice, whether that's like, Oh, I need to get some more resources yeah. in, in here to make it awesome. Or like, you know, like, what is that balance? Like, do I get to see my kid tonight yeah. or do I, do I make a hire for that? I mean, yeah. these are all like questions I feel like that, um, you know, ladder up to a better, a better project and like working with people that do, yeah. do different things than you do. I think that's something where um, a lot of young designers and artists like are afraid to do that, yeah. you know, sometimes, but I, I, once you allow yourself to do that and work with people that do things you don't do and do things better, like your world will open up. Yeah, like, man. Well, and I think too, this, you know, setting that up, the, the sort of the, the final big idea that I think the book delivers is this idea of, of switching gears and being able to, to move beyond that. So what, what, that's what I was hearing when you were talking about, you know, you want to be, you know, designing and, and get the pencil down and like making cool stuff. But, you know, instead you're on the whiteboard and it's like a different mindset, a different gear of like strategy and thinking through it. And so what what has been interesting in your career when, when you think about being able to switch gears and and what did you learn um, in, in his process uh, in the book about you know, how do you do that? Here's a guy who was a multidisciplinary, same as you. So he's mm-hmm. trying out motion for the first time. He's doing print. He's doing all these other things. Um, and, and you sort of, you know, you've, 
you've embraced that in your DNA as well. So how do you switch between Jason, the motion designer, the designer, the strategist, <laughs> the collaborator, the work for hire, the musician, the dad? Like, how do you do that? Yeah, man, I don't know, man. You tell me. Like, it's <laughs> you, you know that drill. It's, it's, it's exciting. And I think if you know, like, every day is going to be a little bit different, um, I think you, you want to rise to that and, and embrace that change because we have to, like we have to embrace change. I mean, we have to be able to walk into a room and, you know, speak this language, but also walk out and be like, Hey, there's a, there's a staff that I need to relay that to and make sure that they're hyped and understand that and want to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, the ability to be able to shift and, and change on a dime, I think is something that in this industry, it's a must. Like if you don't, if, if you don't want to do that and you just want to be like known for one thing, I would just feel like that would get, super boring. And, and for me, I, I, I have to know that in a year from now, what I'm learning now is going to translate into something else. Mm -hmm. And that's what I loved about, um, you know, Hillman, um, before his death, like he, he decided that I love film. I love, you know, I love brand, but I'm also, how do, how do I kind of, what's in the middle of that? And it's the people. So he really concentrated on the people that were doing the work that mm -hmm. he was uh, involved with. And, and I see that in story now. I mean, it's everywhere, like in brand and advertising. It's like if you don't, if you're not telling a story, then like, what are you telling? You know. So, mm. I, I, I appreciate that, but I know that's not the end game either. I know it's like you have to continually want to learn and want to figure things out. I mean, for instance, I also love this idea of like the power of no, but also the power of yes. And very on in my career, I said yes to everything, and that mm. really helped me. Um, whether it was a success or not, it really helped me. Um, realize what I do, what I want to do and what I don't want to do. Yeah. Um, you know, for instance, like um, beginning of this year, I got this awesome call from Mountain Dew. They're like, we want you to represent um, Ohio and drop in this new flavor for like uh, major melon, it's called for watermelon. So like do your thing, like we'll, we'll support it and do it, you know, kind of like one, one day at 9 a.m. the next day at 9 a.m. kind of thing. And I had like the weekend to do it. And I'm like, I, all right, like I, I got to do this, man. It's Mountain Dew. Are you kidding me? Like, who hasn't been drinking Mountain Dew and ruin our, ruining our teeth since we're kids, you know? So, like, you can tell. But, um, yeah, it was so much fun, you know? Like, just to be able to, to – those projects where you just don't know the end result and people are yeah. like, Here, here's here's an idea. Here's a little bit of a strategy. Like, just make it and, and do your thing. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's the, the Those are the times that I, I, I really want to step up to the pedestal and, and like – grow that. Yeah. You know? I love that. Make it and do your thing. So here's a question for you. So the book is, is short MTIV for, mm -hmm. um, make the invisible visible. Um, there's a lot of designers out there who want to be known. There's a lot of people out there who, who want to be visible. Um, you have had the opportunity that you are visible. So, you know, you've got brands like Mountain Dew who have seen you and they've reached out to you. You've got other brands across the city and across the country who view something really special and unique about your work. Um, what do you say to those <clears throat> who maybe don't feel visible, those that feel invisible? Have you ever had a time when you feel invisible? How do you work through that? Uh, clearly your work is bold. It stands out. You've been very successful at being visible and recognized. So take a moment, think about that. And what do you say to those who are like, man, I just want to pop like Snell, I just want to pop like, like Hillman or Sagmeister or whoever. I just want somebody to just notice that I have a point of view. What do you say to them? Well, first, that's an amazing question. And I think we all strive to do that. I mean, no matter how big, small you are, it's, it's one of those things where that, what is it, the imposter syndrome, those kind of things mm -hmm. that like people we, in our industry, we talk about a lot. Um, I think for me, what, what allows me to have those thoughts of grandeur and keep reaching is the, those opportunities from asking questions. Um, and I, and, and you cannot stop asking questions. I know, you know, you get up and you, you're like, oh, I could never, I could never reach out to Aaron Draplin and, and ask him a question. It, it turns out you can. And now we have these tools mm -hmm. like Instagram, these kind of things. I mean, for instance, you know, we're all hitting process. We're all posting things. We're all, learning together we're all asking questions. Um, but I noticed something that Drapplin wasn't doing on his Instagram and I hit him up and I said, man, you don't have any motion on there, man. Like your work would look so great. Just a little bit of animation. 
He's like, yeah, here, do it. So I did a series of like his, um, um, his, his Friday talks that he does on Instagram. Um, and, and they worked. He's like, man, he posted them. And there's, you know, thousands of eyes on that stuff. And he's like, hey, my buddy Jason did that. So you never know. Like mm. if you just ask a question or you see a need or you're like, let's say you're, um, you're, uh, you, you, you draw a lot of type and that's your thing. Well, guess what? Someone else needs that. So why not mm. reach out to another person that maybe you see online or out and about a mural, like whatever that is, and just say, hey, I want to offer up my skills. It's not even about money. You just want to make connections, you know, and that's always going to lead to work. I think that the fact that you're asking for money, like you don't have to do that yet. There's like yeah. that process of like step one, ask a question. Step two, add a value, like, hey, I can help you do this. And then step three, man, sit back and, and, and have some fun, you know? So yeah. I, I, I don't know like that. And that'll lead to work and, and that'll lead to all these different paths. And, you know, that's why, again, coming back to Hillman Curtis and, and you could kind of see like him, ha like weaving these paths through design and through, through art that I, I think really at the end of the day, just kind of brought a smile and some joy to people. And that's, that's kind of what I want to do. Like yeah. if it's loud, if it's soft, like, man, let's make, you know, what's wrong with making someone smile or laugh, you know, through yeah. design, through art, you know, man, dude, I'm loving this conversation, <laughs> man. I knew, I knew it was going to be a great hang. But uh. I, I mean, this is, I think what you just said there is so important. You know, I think no matter where you're at in your career, if you're, if you're on the top of the list somewhere or you're on the bottom, I think we often forget that we're all the same. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when, when we zoom out, you know, we zoom out the pale blue dot, like <laughs> no one sees Jason, no one sees Brandon, no one sees Draplin. Right. It's just a dot, you know? Yeah. And I think we, we, we don't give ourselves that freedom because I think we, we look at ego and we look at all those other things. Oh, I, there's no way I could reach out to this person. Right. They're so much better than me. Yeah. But what we don't, rem what we don't remember is that there's a bunch of juniors who look at us who right. are more established in this career who want to get to know us. Yeah. They would die to take us to grab a cup of coffee. There's a lot of people who are looking at you like, oh man, I really want to send a DM to Jason Snell. There's no way he'd reply to me. Uh, and I think and we, Jason Snell, I got you. <laughs> and I think we, I think we forget that, right? Yeah, we forget for that sure. as people, you know, even from a young age, you know, kids are like, oh, you know, I, I can't raise my hand and ask the principal a question, mm. right? I can only ask my teacher a question. Right, and I think that, right, right. that when we become empowered, when we believe and trust in our own value that we have something to offer to the world, it starts to open up opportunity that says, yeah, I, I can reach out to this person. Like, yeah, sure enough, yeah, Jay-Z is a great songwriter and business mind, but I do some things that maybe he doesn't. So, exactly. So why can't I shoot him a DM? The worst that happens is he doesn't respond. Right. But he might dig what I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, right? that's, and that's surprising. Like, there's a lot of people who will be like, ooh, you can do that motion piece? Like, I don't do that. Like, I don't know where to start with that. And, but you can take this work that lives in all these other places and actually make another corner for yeah. it and do that. And that, man, that's exciting. And I could see a lot of young designers doing that because look, you're, you're 21, 22, 23 years old you're walking out, you're not going to be an art director and you shouldn't be like, yeah. you, you should actually go work for some agencies and learn the ropes, man. I mean, yeah. I know everybody has a different path, but I'm glad I did that because I, I realized like, Oh, that's, that's how you do it. But how you do it should change. But yeah. having a basis for something like really like it just sets your focus for like what you want to do next. Yeah. And, and I don't know, like every, every agency is, is different, but it also has, you know, core values that are mm -hmm. similar, you know, yeah. and, and, and to me, man, it is, it's about getting to that next step. Um, but not, but not like in, in, in growths of numbers on an Instagram, but yeah. getting to that next step of like confidence. Right. Yeah. And that's, and, and, and you can see that now, even from like three years ago, like in my, in my stroke of my pen, like you can see confidence in those lines. Yeah. And I think you're like, kids are going to get confidence in their lines, whatever line that is, it's yeah. going to ladder up, man. Man, dude, you're giving me all the stuff, man. <laughs> confidence in those lines. I like that. Yeah. So, so you talked about, you know, your focus pointing towards what's next. What's next for you, man? So you've, you've done the shop thing, you've bounced around and now you're at another transition point, right? So you're, you're kind of 
back doing your thing again. Yeah. What, what's now? What is? What are you doing now? What do you want the world to know that you're looking for? And like, here's a platform where you can tell the world, <laughs> uh, hey, here's what I'm trying to do. Tell them. Yeah, well, hey, again, I appreciate this, man. This is a good hang. You <laughs> you always have like really great perspectives and, and just knowing how to treat people. And I really appreciate that. Um, and what's next for me? You know, I've had a, man, I, I've been, I've had a great career so far, you know, being able to come out of, out of school, work my tail off, work for different agencies of all sorts and really learn a lot from people here in Cincinnati and beyond. I mean, I've had some really great mentors from the Blink guys, Dan and Steve mm. to, you know, uh, uh, Aaron Draplin for sure. Like just like being able to talk with him online and, 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 uh, we, we've done some shows together, which has been really great. Um, having opportunities, you know, with Amazon and Mountain Dews and things like that. Um, and it was, it was, I think one of the great things for me was like being able to sell We Have Become Vikings to uh, BLDG, um, who's great over in Covington and Jay and those guys, man, they have a hell of a machine over there. Mm. And, you know, but I was able to bring my team over there, you know, Phil um, and Matt and they bought houses, you know, like I wasn't able to give them that. I wasn't able to give them like healthcare. And those are like important life things that for me make me feel like, um, I'm grown up, you know, like I'm able yeah. to help, help, you know, other families do that. And I think for me, what's next is just, man, come in and just be, uh, almost like, um, a ninja or, um, assassin, however you want to look at it, man, on yeah. projects, come in and be like, how do we elevate this? Or, yeah. you know what, we got this whole thing baked out and it's great, but we need this extra little thing in there. And whatever that is, whether this illustration, design, motion, storytelling, smiling, I don't yeah. know, screaming, whatever, over top of it, man. Like, that's kind of what I want to do. I, I just yeah. feel like being on an island is fun, but when you get to come in and, and, and dive in and, you know, help other projects, um, you know, it just, it's never boring. Yeah. And if it's terrible, you can walk, man. <laughs> but <laughs> That's but, cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, so for those listening who are like digging your point of view and your vibe and they're like, man, I want to work with this guy. How, how do we get a hold of you? Where do we follow you? Give us all the stuff. Yeah. So Instagram at Jason Snell. Um, I'm on Behance right now too. That's a great platform. Um, I think that's Jason Snell. And I think Twitter is like Jason D. Snell. And that's like that. J-A-S-O-N-S-N-E-L-L. -L. -L. Yep. Okay. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I don't have the, the website quite together because it's all kind of new and fresh and everything. <laughs> you know how that is. But um, yeah, I mean, Instagram is probably the best place like where I'm chatting and with people and sharing yeah. and those kind of and things. It sounds too. to me like, I mean, at least from your story, like you're you're pretty open for whatever. So if you need to travel East coast, West coast international, like, yeah, let's do got, it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's fun, right? Like, yeah. and you know, like you just never know when you're saying yes or no, like you just, you just never know where that next, um, that next job or, or really just next opportunity to have, to have fun is man. Yeah. So like, let's, if you guys got a good idea, man, let's, let's do it together. You know? Nice. <laughs> well, I can tell you this much. We, we, I have a list of, um, you know, you, you hear people, you know, talk about, um, you know, sometimes people use the, fr the phrase like, you know, small, small fish, big pond, you know, big fish, that sort right, of thing. Right. Well, I have a list. <clears throat> um, I've had an opportunity through this show and through some other experiences to meet some pretty phenomenal creatives. And I have a list of, of freelancers. Um, it's called the whale, the whale list. Oh, nice. And so there's some pretty big <laughs> fish, some pretty talented people. Oh, you're connected, um, man. I, know, I already know. And you're you're on my whale list. Man. Oh man, look at that! You're I on made, my whale list. I made the whale you list. You made the man. whale list. So um, y'all heard it. So I hope um, <laughs> I hope you know maybe this year there's a project that feels like a good fit where it's like yeah. man, this is the kind of thing that just needs that energy from from Snell. Oh. Um, it would be cool to be able to work together on something like that. So I think that's that sounds like a way that sounds like one of the things that you really celebrate is when people bring you in because of a of a point of view that you have or something that maybe you can insert into the conversation. Um, and, yeah. and I think that that's, and I think what's fun too, is like, you get something like maybe a, a brand who's like really formal, but then bringing in a guy like you can help discover new things that maybe aren't there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think, that, I love those ideas. I think too. that's a yeah. fun way to utilize like Cause a lot of times, like I, I might bring in a copywriter who's like really funny on a serious brand. <laughs> that's smart. Right. No, that's and good. so it kind of yin and yangs. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, man, I'm just, 
I'm just so stoked for you and what's next. And oh, you're, you're a good dude and uh, and a good a good family man. Oh. And uh, you've been good for the city. So. Man, that's so cool. Yeah, I, I appreciate, appreciate it, man. It. I love what you're doing here too, man. Like you're elevating podcasts, man. So everybody oh, out man. there, he's <laughs> elevating that, man. He's got... He's. I'm walking up the stairs here, and he's already telling me these guys is like got coming up on the up on the show, and I'm like, what? So oh, pretty well, great, pretty know, great. It's, it's been a lot of fun, and I think too, it's you know, uh, my friend Jaime Cabrera who who hosts Confessions of a Creative Director. Uh, me and him were chatting about this. It's like um, we just get the privilege of like having a personal master classes. Yeah. You know, like you get yeah. cool people to come on and just share their story, and we get a front row seat. That's and then awesome. Get to share it with everybody else. So, but not everybody can do that though. You you do have to have Thanks, that man. like that charismatic. You got to be able to talk to people. Yeah, you know, and that's that comes with experience too. You, I'm sure you didn't come out <laughs> 19 years old like as you are now. So that's great. Yeah. Well, I've, I've always <laughs> ran my mouth, but I've learned now <laughs> right. to control it in a way that's more productive. So. Ooh, control. That's yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, man, you guys, you guys heard it first. Uh, make the invisible visible uh, by Hillman Curtis. That's the book today. Our guest. Jason Snell, uh, amazing creative talent. Go check him out on the internets at Jason Snell. Hire him, work for him. He's got cool products and posters and all sorts of stuff out there. Dude, it's been a pleasure, man. Oh, you're too kind. I Thanks so much, brother. Always. Awesome, right. man. Great to see you Talk again. Talk soon. Cheers. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you did, please subscribe on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Join the conversation on Instagram at a quick read podcast. See you in two. A quick read is a leap group podcast.